The Dow itself is racing along nicely, so uh, it is a sort of a very good read on the markets themselves. Uh, a man who has profited very, very handsomely off these markets, and in fact, you can argue democratize them, is the man who founded TD Ameritrade. Now, as a uh, bestseller out on it, the harder you work, the luckier you get. For a lot of people, it's just the opposite, but, I, but whatever, it's, it's a good case and premise for a book. Good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks very kindly. You know, you talk about um, things at a time when we're so focused on, on corporations and what they're doing and whether they can maintain it. I want to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of the book, but this has been one hell of a market. Do you see it yeah, continuing? Yeah. Do you ever get a little like, whoa? I... I know that there's going to be ups and downs. It can continue. It, it really kind of depends on uh, a couple of things. In my humble judgment, first of all, it depends on government policies. And then we need to let young people know, hey, you need to try to start your own business if you have that urge. One of the things that really kind of bothers me and one of the reasons why I wrote the book is to encourage young people to follow their inclinations to start a business if they have those inclinations. So the relationship between number of new businesses that start every year and the number of businesses that close every year is a very important relationship to keep track of. But and is the environment in this country the way it is now conducive to that? And it's I'm not. Okay, so, not so now opinion. let's say the stuff you're hearing out of Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, does that make it more or less conducive? That makes it probably uh, less conducive because a lot of young people don't know about the free enterprise system and socialism is so attractive when you hear it. It's always failed. It brings misery and poverty. But if you've never experienced that and you don't know, you're going to think that's probably the best way to go. And that's what concerns me because... But capitalism has been vilified, right? I mean, they're actually using a line that no less than Elizabeth Warren used a, a few months ago that she's a capitalist as a badge of dishonor. <laughs> well, I think that there's a lot of rough edges around capitalism. The words I like to use are free enterprise. In, in my mind, free enterprise shows that balance of regulation and control into the environment that makes it good and healthy. Uh, free enterprise brings jobs. We need the free enterprise system just to in have a job for young people coming into the marketplace. But you, you said many Americans, I'm afraid, no longer respect free enterprise. The term has come to, to seem the property of conservatives, while liberals appear drawn instead to socialism. And apparently, I'm taking the leap here, you aren't, in record numbers. We, we as conservatives and people that adhere to the beautiful aspects of free enterprise, have allowed the socialists run it, uh, really to kind of take over the uh, megaphone and, and talk about well, isn't the isn't that indicative of a failure of capitalism? To, or, or should capitalists, good capitalists, step up and say, here, this is what, how it's done? Somebody should. Uh, it, it should be the whole country should really kind of embrace the free enterprise. So you system. don't buy this, ex when you hear this extreme gap between the very rich and the very poor, you don't. Is that a capitalism failing, a government not taxing guys like you enough failing? What? There isn't any question that the Gabatine, the rich and the poor, probably needs to have some uh, oversight. Yeah. Uh, but you, you, if you're going to take away the benefits of getting rich, you're going to destroy capitalism. You're going to destroy the free enterprise system. And what happens? People can't get jobs. The poor get poorer. I mean, if people want to step out of poverty, they have to have a healthy economy. And that is really going to require capitalists. It's going to require people who are able to take advantage of the free enterprise system. Do we need billionaires? I think we I'm need... I'm looking at one, I know. You're looking at one? Right. Yeah. I'm going to say we need them. We need me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we need people to invest. Uh, we need people to put money back into the economy. And it comes from uh, people who have it. And there might be millionaires and billionaires, but it's got to have people who accumulate their savings to make the system work. But, it, you know, it, you were doing this when no one thought it was. We, the, the stories are legendary. You echo them again in your book. You start up a little more than $12,000 from friends and family. I hope they're all rich today. As a they result. are all rich. Good, right. good. Um, but it was based on the rather ridiculous notion that the average guy had a chance in this market as well. Do you still think that's the case? Oh, definitely. Sure. The markets may have changed, but you just yeah. have to study the markets and understand how they have changed. There isn't any doubt 
that there are more people educated to be able to take care of themselves than have ever been in our marketplace before. Yes, they can. But you got to put time in it. You got to put energy into it. But you, you know, try. you know the old argument: a bull market gets out of hand when it's the taxi cab driver day trading and all of that. Does that scare you? That notion that the, the little guy is the last to get out, the first to get hosed. I think that's probably not true. I, I, I don't think that the individual investors are the ones that do the following. I think, from my experience at a discount brokerage firm, which catered to the individual investor, that a lot of those people are the leaders and everybody else kind of falls. And by the way, the statistics bear you out. I mean, all this Good. so-called schmarty money that knows has some insight that others don't, it doesn't pan out a lot of times. It's a lot easier to get in and out as an individual investor than in and out as an institution. You know, I, I was mentioning, you don't mention this kind of stuff in your book, but the, the controversy over Steve Easterbrook stepping down at McDonald's, should CEOs be held to a higher standard? I think they should. They're the leaders. They're the ones that have to set the standards for the whole company. A lot of people turn around, I'm not here to besmirch politicians, yeah. but politicians, including one in the White House, might not be <laughs> held to the same standard, right? <laughs> well, I think, it, from it's my observation, that people hold the President of the United States to a standard that is impossible to meet. They want him to be perfect. No human being has ever been perfect. So I think. But is he held to a lesser standard than a guy who runs a, a hamburger place? I. No, he should be held to a higher standard. No, That's there, what I'm saying. There's any doubt about it. But I don't think the, the president has committed uh, infractions that would say he should. He's not reaching that higher standard. Do you think it's today. in the market's interest, by the way, this president survive all this and get reelected? Oh, I think so. I think it's if important. If you weren't, he says it would be thousands of points on the Dow. Do you agree with that? Oh, I, I think he might be putting a lot of emphasis on uh, his uh, thousands of points, but I don't think it would be good for the economy. If we would especially have a socialist come in, uh, that would really So any one of these Democratic candidates or front-running candidates, they worry you in, in, in some of their ideas. The, the, Who's the biggest worry to you? Oh, I think they all are. I, 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 I think Elizabeth Warren is a big worry. I mean, if we did what she did, we would go broke. I mean, our country would be in poverty. Yeah. It, it's just unreasonable. And, and how she can get to the position that she has with those type of policies as her planks in her platform is amazing to me. And it indicates that we have really let down uh, our young people in training them and letting them know that the strength of the America of the United States has always been the free enterprise system, nothing else. And so we have to keep it. Do you think when you're who you are, now you're, you're the family's predominant owner of the Chicago Cubs, you got in a little controversy last year, earlier this year, with some emails that came up that were said to be defamatory to, to minorities. That had to, you apologized, went before all the Cubs fans. But would you have gotten the kind of scrutiny you did if you weren't who you are? Correct. I would so not have does that get back to the notion that there is a higher standard? There is a higher standard. Uh, yes, I, I think so. Uh, with respect to myself, yeah. I wish I would have said things differently, and I've apologized for that. Uh, bigotry is wrong, and uh, we all suffer. But when we manage to merit trade, we, in my book, we, we talk about just putting HR people in our lobby to hire as fast as we can. Now, we didn't want to hire people that were not competent. We looked for people with talent and skill and attitude. you had booming growth and had to deal with that, and then you always get some winners that come in, right? Right. Yeah, we've had the same. Um, finally, within your own family, which I find fascinating, you and I have a lot in common, not the billionaire thing, but <laughs> that our wives hated us when we were first going out. Now, you're, that's cruel to say your wife hated She wasn't a yeah. big fan. Um, but she grew to become one, yeah. and, and, and my, my wife rallied Brown decades <laughs> into it. Uh, but even in your family and dealing with your daughter, uh, uh, who was gay, I mean, it, you open all that up to be, look, with all my success, I'm not uh, above any of the things that average folks have to deal with within their own families. That I found to be the most refreshing insight. Well, I think that uh, we have a great family, and most of it is due to my wife. 
She was <laughs> the one that, that really has well, so kind of con you. Kind of controlled things at home. Like I said in the book, you know, my wife said on the way home one day from work, hey, you may be boss at work, but at home I'm the boss. <laughs> Uh, so, but you uh, were very understanding of the daughter at a very tough time when that was hardly the case, not at all like the environment today. I, that that's says true. a lot about you. you know? That's that's true. Uh, it, it was uh, a difficult time uh, that afternoon that she told us that she was coming out of the closet that she was gay. But what? I love her. She's my daughter. What, You're a great dad. And I, I always love, we were talking to her about how you handle Thanksgivings, because she's a little more, more, shall we say, left of center than, yes. than, than the boys. Right. Um, but everyone manages to eat in peace, right? That's correct. Well, we have a great time. The family really enjoys themselves. All right. Joe as Ricketts, a thank you very, very much. I highly recommend the book. It's a good humanizing look at what is possible in this country. Knock on wood for now. We have a lot more coming up after this.